and then good afternoon and uh, thank you very much for joining uh, today's copper club with julian barlow chair of wiltshire wildlife community energy and jake bernia from communities for renewables my name's paul pizzala and i'm senior investment manager at fx working with jake julian and the team on the wiltshire wildlife community energy solar for silverwood school share offer so before we get started there's a little bit of housekeeping to do i'd like to let you know that the couple club is recorded and we make it available to watch on fx's youtube channel and we'll also edit this down to a highlighted version please note this is not a financial promotion and if you do need any advice please do talk to an independent financial advisor uh, the Cover Club usually runs for 30 to 45 minutes and really fantastic opportunity to meet uh, Julian and Jake and ask questions about why Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy is such a, an impactful organisation, what it's achieved to date and what this particular, uh, your, this particular investment is funding. So please do feel free to ask questions in the chat box and we'll take those as we go along. So um, before Jake and Julian introduce themselves, I'll summarize the investment opportunity. Uh, Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy have launched a community share offer to finance the installation of a new solar array on Silverwood School. And we'll, we'll get into the into the detail on, on, on the relationships there. And that will generate clean energy and produce a fund of around 5,000 pounds a year that will be used for educational projects. So without any further ado, um, Jake and Julian, may I ask you to introduce yourselves, please? Should I kick off, Jake? Okay, so I'm Julian, Julian Barlow. I'm the chair of uh, WWC, as we abbreviate it. Um, I'm a, a businessman I'm in marketing. Um, I've had my marketing agency for 20, 30 years. And I kind of specialised in corporate social responsibility when CSR was a buzzword, now since replaced by many other buzzwords. And uh, I became to this project as a, uh, a trustee of the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust. Um, and as a trustee, the trustee has... Two board, the trust has two board positions on the WWC, the energy company, and I took one of those board positions about four years ago. And um, I'm a I'm a beekeeper, so I have a particular interest in in nature. Um, I'm also a parish councillor, so I'm uh, involved in community projects in in my local area in Wiltshire in many ways. Um, but it's very exciting to be with you today, and uh, and Jake and I are looking forward to telling you about our upcoming uh, project. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Julian. Fantastic. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jake Bernyat. I'm a director of Communities for Renewables, or CFR, and we are a not-for-profit company that helps communities generate their own energy. Brilliant. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Jake. And just to say, FX has worked with Jake and, and CFRE uh, over many projects for many years, and this this is, isn't the first time uh, Wiltshire WWC has come to the platform either. So um, we're, we're, we're all you know, seasoned hands here. Um, I just wonder, first of all, if you can tell us a little bit about the overall impact and importance of the project, Julian, to, to all the, the stakeholders, including nature. Yeah, I mean, this is very exciting for us. It's the first new array We've launched in 10 years and um, and uh, when the original prospect came across our desk, um, it, it sort of was a, a sort of triumvirate of, of, of opportunity, really. One is we, we stand to do two things primarily here as an organisation. Um, we stand to promote nature and um, expand nature in Wiltshire, but we also start, stand to reduce carbon in uh, in Wiltshire. And as a community organisation, our job is to help communities. And so... Silverwood is a new school. It's a school for special needs children it's just outside the visors in a place called Roud, sort of 600, 650 students. Really, really exciting school, does tremendous things against sometimes a very difficult backdrop. And they were building a new school and 
part of that that build process was how are they going to power it? And so the guys from CFR came to us and said, look, um, there's an opportunity here to put a thousand panels on the roof. Um, as part of that project, you can provide them with electricity, which is carbon carbon neutral. And at the same time, you know, we can look at a producing community fund, which can give them money each year, which they can use to work with the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust to examine sustainability, nature and wildlife. So kind of what's not to like. And so we were very pleased to be able to get involved with it. And um, I mean, Jake can take up the technicalities of the, of the thing. But from our perspective as an energy company, it ticks all the boxes. Fantastic. That's, that's brilliant. So these panels are they're already on, on already installed and and as Julian said they're, they're part of a really exciting new development uh, on the road campus near near Devizes. Um, Silver School is a Wiltshire Council school. Uh, it was important for planning and for the school and for the council that these new buildings were as low carbon as possible and the solar panels were a really important part of that. But the councils struggling for budgets they they were struggling to to find the budget to fund these themselves and hence Wiltshire wildlife community energy stepping in and being able to fund them and and, uh, and and own them means that these panels are happening when otherwise they could have been pulled out of, of the development so there's over a thousand panels 521 kilowatts so it's pretty big as as rooftop systems go generate around 480,000 kilowatt hours a year and about 40% of that power will be used directly on site by the school and the rest will be exported to the grid. Brilliant. Fantastic. So um, really, really important that you guys are working with, with WWCE to enable the council to get this, this project ahead and provide the, the, the low cost electricity to the schools, which I guess is also very important for their budgeting purposes too in 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 these somewhat straightened times so that that's fantastic um i just wonder if you can can explain the relationship between wwce silverwood school and key stakeholders such as the local council which you just touched on and how that whole triumvirate works just to make it really abundantly clear for um, the investors. Probably better your Jake, you answer that since you kind of put the deal together with yeah, that. Sure. Okay. That'd be okay. So Silverwood School is, is a Wiltshire Council school. Wiltshire Council are funding the redevelopment. Uh, the panels on, on completion of this offer, the panels will be owned by Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy, who will enter into a long term roof lease with the school uh, and they will sell the power generated via a power purchase agreement, which is how you know, it's, it's a standard arrangement for community funded rooftop PV, as people will have seen across solar for schools and Bath and West Community Energy and, and other similar offers. Um, and the, the solar power, which is generated and used directly on site by the school, that will be metered and the school will pay a fixed price for that power over 25 years and any surplus power will be exported to the grid and sold to an energy supplier at the highest price we can get. So the, the school is the uh, the user of, of, of the power um, and, and the beneficiary of the long-term fixed price, but the panels are owned by Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy who will be responsible for looking after them, ensure they're maintained, insured, et cetera, over, over the life of their project. Okay, brilliant, that's that's fantastic. And, and just to, to, to help, uh, place CF community communities for renewables, which is you, Jake, and and, and your your team. Could you just explain what what your role in this project is? And, sure. and thank you. So CFR was was set up in twenty twelve, been going for twelve years, and we were set up to provide the expertise and the resources that communities, energy enterprises need to develop, finance, and manage their own generation projects. Um, so. Over those 12 years, we've helped to develop and finance around 70 million pounds worth of community solar. And we we look after about a quarter of the UK's community owned solar capacity. And for WWCE, uh, who own two solar farms and some rooftop installations on Wiltshire Wildlife Trust properties, and shortly this one at Silverwood School, 
we provide essentially all the back office function to keep the organization going on behalf of the volunteer directors and the members. So that covers uh, monitoring the performance of the solo arrays, managing the operations contractors to ensure everything runs smoothly, power purchase agreement renewals, uh, and, and also the, all the administrative aspects of running the society, bookkeeping, finance management, accounts, uh, reporting to the board, uh, preparing financial projections, ensuring the bank's paid, ensuring the members are paid, all, all of that work that goes on behind the scenes. And I, I'll tell you, there, there is a lot of it. Um, and once a quarter, the, the board meet, and this is where the volunteer directors come in and they receive a large pack of information from us and saying, this is how things are going and these are all the decisions that, that we need to make. Uh, specifically for the Silverwood School Project, we've been essentially developing the project on behalf of Portugal Community Energy, dealing with the power purchase agreement and lease agreements, um, preparing the share offer on behalf of the directors, putting together the financial projections, ensuring that all the numbers that go into the financial projections are are verified, i.e. they're traced back to a to an auditable source, uh, and, and then it all goes on, on onto the offer, which is put out put out by FX. Brilliant. That's fantastic. Very, very comprehensive, Jay. Thanks. Thanks for that. Um Paul, should brilliant. I tell you a bit about should I tell you a bit about how the energy company came about in the first place? And yes, please oh, do. Where, That'd where, be great. Because we, we, it's quite interesting. We, we, we one of the big issues for solar is land, really. And we were very lucky in that we were an adjunct of the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust. So sort of around 2013, 2014, the, the trust is quite large. It's got sort of 47 reserves in Wiltshire, 35,000 members. But occasionally they get gifted land, which isn't appropriate for wildlife or for flora and fauna. And this was the case back in the north of Wiltshire, back around 2014, 2015. Um, when two sites came available, one at Chelworth and one at Bregden Manor. And Chelworth has ended up as a sort of one megawatt array, uh, which was built in 2014. And our second um, second larger um, project is at Braden, where that's a five megawatt array. And we got that land essentially for nothing because the trust wanted to use very far sightly at the time. I think it was the only trust in the UK that set up its own solar operation. But under the rules, it had to be entirely independent. And so hence, um, and myself, and there's only one other trustee, are, are volunteer directors. All the others are shareholders in those existing Braden and Chelworth uh, arrays. And um, and it's also all voluntary. And over the years, um, CFR have come on board and they've made the whole thing much more efficient uh, and much more profitable. And I mean, in terms of our numbers, um, you know, we, ha we had an income of around about 870,000 in 2023. We will have an income of about 1.2 million this year, and we're forecasting probably about 1.6 next year. So, kind of, hopefully, investors will think we know what we're doing. Um, well, at least the guys from CFR know what they're doing, and <laughs> the board is is there to kind of ensure it sort of stays on the uh, on, on the on its strategic path. But this particular Silverwoods thing is unusual in that we you know we don't launch a new array every five minutes. You know, it's been 10 years since the last one. And that's why we're very excited. We think schools uh, offer a, a big potential for, for solar. They won't all have roofs as big as Silverwood, um, and they won't have a sort of as enlightened uh, governors or, or the councillors Wiltshire. But nevertheless, there are opportunities ahead, I think, to employ much more effective and efficient energy sources, which are carbon free. Mm. And, uh, and a lot of the parents are very keen. Now, pa parents are much younger than me. <laughs> and they, you know, sustainability, um, green, Eco issues are very important to them and very important for their kids and their grandkids. And so if the, we can help them realize both the children learning about nature through the community fund, and we can also get, you know, cheaper power or certainly power that is carbon neutral, then th this, you know, th that's a very, very enticing prospect. And so we're hoping so we will we'll be the first of many of kind of schools that we can work with this. And we have a track record to show both the schools and the governors that we kind of know what we're doing. Brilliant. Excellent. Th thanks. Thanks for that, Julian. That's really good to hear. Good to hear the history um, and, and understand the relationship, how, how, how you as a board of directors and the trustees steer the projects and, and understand the, you know, the genesis of WWCE. It's really, really, really good to hear that you're, you know, still in the game launching projects and have got more projects to come um 
just in like terms of giving the 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 the, the participants a bit of color is is there an educational aspect um to the project in terms of helping the kids understand about renewable energy is that is that part of what you do yeah i mean i, I think it's an interesting relationship with the school you, you clearly can't dictate the curriculum because you put some solar panels on the roof that would that would be kind of inappropriate but the schools all have a desire to imbue the children with a much greater understanding of nature and this is one of the, the beauties of working with the Wiltshire Wildlife Trust uh, and the fact that there'll be a community fund element to this project. Uh, and that is that we will we will channel funds back into the school for them to then supplement their uh, teachings. And, you know, uh, they're actually on quite a large site. It's it's not it's not small. And so there are opportunities for ponds and for wildlife areas and for wildflower meadows and this sort of thing, all of which we can help them initiate uh, but outside that in that deal as it were to to, to produce power and 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 an effect to have an effective ppa and so yeah we will work with them and we're keen to work with them but kind of in a in a voluntary rather than a mandatory way if you get my drift yeah yeah absolutely is that fair jake have i put that have i made that fair yeah and i think that the community fund coming out of this is a really important aspect aspect to the project and the business model really for this, for, for Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy, is it, is it covers its costs. It covers its operating costs. It pays investors their, their target return. Um, and then there's this five, maybe more, 5K a year, maybe more community fund income that will go into projects that will be delivered in partnership with the school. I yeah. mean, it, might be, it, might, Paul, it might be worth talking a little bit about our existing community fund, because that's quite a good template to look at the way we might work with the school. When we were set up um, back in 2013, 2014, the community fund was an important aspect of WWCE in that, um, you know, we had three or four constituencies which need to be paid. The investors need to be paid. The bank needs to be paid. We need to cover our costs. CFR needs to be paid. There's those kind of stuff. But then on top of that, with any kind of surplus we had, we originally had very small expectations of a 10,000 a year contribution to a community fund, which over the years has helped everything from putting solar panels on village halls to new ponds, um, you know, for schools and for you know, scout huts. Um, but that's now grown to over 40,000 a year and will get bigger as our, as you could see, our income is, is increasing. And it's now got to the stage where the community fund board have got a wealth of opportunity. It used to be that we had real problems drumming up interest. You know, there was free money, basically, but nobody <laughs> wanted to have it. And now it's a case of turning people down, which is kind of a yeah. nice position to be in um and also on top of that um community fund we're able to also uh, employ a um carbon reduction champion um who is a jointly funded op uh, operative uh, lady that that works both with the wiltshire wildlife trust and us and so beyond the community fund we also now offer an advice service and uh, we attend community events we help uh, it's a it's a rural county Wiltshire there's an awful lot of housing that is not really fit for purpose in terms of you know being draft proof and being being um a, a helpful in terms of keeping the heat in and so mm. Jess um Jess Thimbley who's our carbon reduction champion is an ex-citizens advice bureau um advisor and she goes along to events she had 350 surgeries last year and she was able to advise for free a plethora of applicants who look to us to give them advice in terms of how we might improve their life chat you know their lifestyle it, you know the, the cost of living crisis is a hits everybody mm. and whilst we won't go and pay to put draft excluders in we will help point them in the right direction right direction to get funding or to get expertise and that was again on top of the community fund that's a very important role that we see for ourselves as a community energy company yeah yeah, that's brilliant. I, I I really love the way you're you're bringing to life the the community aspect of the organisation, having this very very um, rich ten years of history and experience of of delivering um, to nature and to people. So just just really really fantastic to to hear all about that, Julian. And 
supported by the you know technical technical expertise of of Jake and and his team. So really, really, really great combination. Um, I didn't realize there was forty thousand pounds per annum to to um, donate. I suppose isn't it? And then there'll be a further five thousand. So that's up to forty five thousand. So really, quite you know over the lifetime of the project that. That adds up to a lot of money. You know, you're you you you're you know potentially getting into the million or into the million, aren't you? So that's a lot of community value adds. So I think that's one of the most powerful things about these types of projects is how how that money accumulates and gets fed back in in, in into the community. So just just you know, hats off to you guys for doing that. It's really really fantastic. Um, slight, just, slight um, Jake. That's that, Paul. Sorry. So yeah. I think it's a brilliant story. And this is basically, it's two solar farms that have done this. And imagine if more of our solar farms were run on this basis, what, what the impact could be. Um, but th th there's very significant funds building up in WWC in part because of the energy crisis, that they are on the flip as a generator. WWC is on the flip side of the, en of the energy crisis and generating more income because of people's bills have gone up. And with a community energy scheme, there is a, 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 a positive circle with that, that 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 super profit that they're, they're making rather than going to big infrastructure funds is going back into supporting more carbon reduction projects and helping people who are struggling with their bills in the locality. Um, and it's important to note that WWC has used some of that surplus income that they built up over the last couple of years to seed fund this project prior to launching the share offer to raise half a million. WWC had already put in 121,000 of, of seed funding, and they are prepared to put in another 100,000 if we only reach the minimum target of 400,000, not, not the maximum of, of 500. But it'd be great if we can raise the full 500 from the public, because it means more people involved, more members of, 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 of WWC uh, and, and returns going back to, to individuals. Yeah, fantastic. And I think that's maybe maybe a good good time to touch on you know what are the returns and how how safe and secure are they um in well like maybe let yeah let's if we can sort of just touch on that to give to give investors i think we've done a brilliant job here of or, or julian and jake you've done a very very good job of explaining the impacts and how the model works who cfre is who silverwood school is and who wwce is but Maybe we can sort of touch on how do the investors, how are the investors paid and how do they get their money back? Okay, I'll cover that. So the, the Silverwood Array will be will be owned by a, a wholly owned subsidiary of Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy, as are its other two solar farms. So Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy is the community parent company and it's two existing solar farms, Braden Manor, Manor and Chelworth, each sit in their own subsidiaries. Sil Silverwood likewise will sit in a, in a subsidiary company and the money raised from the share offer into which wildlife community energy will be lent down to that subsidiary to fund the project and the uh, the business model for the Silverwood school investment is it will generate revenue from the sale of electricity to the school and the export of electricity to the grid and that revenue will be used to cover the running costs of the array, including building up reserves to fund component replacement, et cetera, in the future, to pay investors in the Solar for Silverwood School share offer the target interest of 5.5% per year, to pay the £5,000 per year minimum community fund income, and then to pay the investors their capital back over a period of 20 years. Um, so the intention is, is not to hold everyone's money for 20 years and pay it back in the end it is the intention is to pay people's back pay people's capital back over that 20 year period um and that's the investment and and the other important point which is made clear in the offer is that the payment of investors in solar for silverwood school share offer will be dependent on the returns of silverwood school so when we're not planning to cross subsidize Solar for Silver School investors with returns from the, from the two big solar farms. Um, there are a number of risks highlighted in the risk section, and as always, it's really important not just to scan through those, but but to read them. Um, and I think the particularly important risks to look at in relation to this offer is the revenue uncertainty. So there, there could be 
the, the power that's sold to the school is sold at a fixed price. So that is certain. And that accounts for about 70% of the revenue. But the power sold to the grid will be sold at market prices. And we've, uh, we've assumed an average of six and a half pence over, over the life of the, of the project. And the other important number is the percentage of the output used by the school. So that 70% of revenue coming from the school PPA is based on the school using 40% of the power generated. And that is based on a, on um, some modeling of what we think the solar panels would generate each hour over a 12 year period, over a, a 12 month period, compared to a simulation of what those buildings will use each hour over 12 month building, uh, 12 month period, because these are new buildings. So we don't have a record of, of um, historic consumption, but the, 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 um, Technical consultants that did that analysis think that the the forty percent on site consumption is is reasonable. Brilliant. Okay, that's that's a very uh, good point to note that it's a new school, so potentially, well, it, it introduces some uh, uh, variances in in the modelling to what might happen, but at the same time, um, lots of precedent to work from in order to build an accurate model so thank you for that um jake that's really that's really insightful um we've got a question from mark mark says uh, i think this is one for you jake did you consider including battery storage in the proposal and maybe if you can sort of go from a wide angle to a a, a, yeah. a narrow angle just just to walk um everybody through the, the ins and outs of that question uh, so the, I mean, the short answer is we battery batteries aren't included. Possibly look at including them, including them down the line. The the specification for the installation was done by Wilmot Dixon on behalf of Wiltshire Council. So Wiltshire Wildlife Community Energy were not involved in in specifying uh, the system, in, and we didn't have the option to to include batteries or not. But I guess there's a possibility we could look at introducing them down the line if we thought it was worthwhile. The benefit of batteries financially would be to store some of the electricity that otherwise would have been exported to the grid to sell to the school at the higher on-site PPA price. So the business case is based on how much power do you think we could uh, divert via the battery from going to the grid to be sold directly to the school versus the cost of the battery. And normally when we look at it just on that basis, at the moment, batteries are still a marginal investment, but I think it's something that's worth keeping an eye on and potentially introducing down the line and, and the, the the impact would be which wildlife community energy would have to fund some additional investment, but they'd see that 40% on-site consumption figure going up. Okay, I see, I see. So sort of marginal today, not it's not gonna massively change the economics or necessarily benefit the school. So, um, Mark says thanks. Sorry, yeah. Mark says thanks for the answer, Jake. So I think that that's that's taken taken that one. Um, I I think I've got one sort of final finalish technical question. Um, just to help investors understand the how this this project or the, the financing of this project works. Uh, the, the solar. If correct me if, if I'm wrong, the solar panels are already in place on Silverwood School. So what will the investments be used for? Could you just run us through that? And that'd be really useful, thank you. So the, the solar panels are in place and, and logically they were put in place as part of the the, the big development. Um, and the, the construction of the solar, solar panels has been cash flowed by the council, but the council can't afford to fund them long-term. So basically the share offer will be used to repay the council for funding the solar through the construction phase. Okay, brilliant. And then it goes back into WW, WWCE's ownership, CFRE is doing the asset management, uh, school is a beneficiary and, and and investors of course, but you know, benefit from the PPA and um and any anything that's exported to the grid. So that's brilliant. So kind of like in a way the council were doing a bit of a bridging loan. Uh, well, a, a bridging loan for WWCE to to take this asset on and and, and deliver community benefit. So, uh, so the panels are generating already. Mark asks, if so, 
should you be able to check the levels of generation and confirm that they match expectations? I imagine it's a bit early days for that, but I'm interested to know the answer. Uh, yeah, and, re and really it's about what they generate over over a year relative to, to a year's of radiance. Um, yeah, and they're both okay, just yeah. so, so it, is, it is a bit early for that, but we will as, we, as, as soon as WWC picks them up, we will start monitoring them against projections and also looking for you know oddities if if, if there's a sudden dip what causes that as an inverted on and the, and the key key with keeping these installations running well is spotting problems early and dealing with them that that's not a static technology uh sorry it is a static technology but things do things do go wrong and things do need fixing and the quicker you can fi fix it the less money you you lose yeah and i'm sort of imagining that you you have an array of information on your desktop somewhere or somebody in your team is is monitoring the this type of information jake is that would that be correct to assume uh yeah so first off the 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 generation projections which the offer is based on have been reviewed by an independent technical consultant um when it comes to monitoring performance yeah we we have a login to the inverter portals and, and generation meters um and we're we're, we're monitoring them daily Brilliant. Okay, fantastic. Excellent. And then a um, couple of technical questions, one which I, I might have to have to take from Celia, and then one from Fran. As I may have misunderstood, but why a share offer and not a bond for 20 years? Uh, we did consider doing a bond, but we decided to do another share offer in WWC because that's how WWC has raised investment from the public to date. It's got over 500 investors um, and we felt that would keep things simpler rather than having a completely different class of, of, of bond investors potentially directly into the into the project company. And there's, there's pros and cons of each that Paul, you can explain in terms of the, the varying tax benefits. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I, generally speaking, I would say for for bond, sorry, for raises of this size, community shares are are, are pretty much the perfect vehicle um, for, for larger projects. Bonds make sense too, so you know, it it, it is a little bit of horses for courses, um, but at the end of the day, you know, it is it is the client, i.e., um, WWCE, and and um, CFRE working together that you know decide is what what is right for the for the organization in terms of its capital structure balance sheet and, and, and marketability of the offer. So um and of course, you know, new members, that's all that's obviously an important thing. You, you you if you invest in the offer, you become a member. And the really, you know, one of the important things about community shares is engaging the membership and you know getting getting their attention and engagement in in what organizations like wwce are doing in in, in their um i think that's enough for me fran's telling me to to to, to shut up by the looks of it so <laughs> i'll move i'll move on to the next question um so celia asks is it possible to explain a bit more about the actual process of investing if my, my colleague julie if you see, if you if you if you're watching, you will see that the FX logo and, and the the smiley the smiley face is actually called Bucky. That's money. That's money doing good. That's the part of the branding for FX. And um, so, you know, if you go onto fx.org.uk and um, you know, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, help at fx.org.uk. So we would be very, very happy to answer all your questions about how to log on to FX's platform and invest in this offer. So do, do feel free to, to, to check out the website and um, we, would, we would happily uh, take your questions if you send something in at help at fx.org.uk. So I'm very happy to help, help on, on, on that. Um, Brilliant. Okay. Hang on a second. So Tamsin very, very um, helpfully, uh, timing is everything in life, of course, isn't it, Julian? I'm sure you know that as a marketing person. 
Um, so I find it very user friendly and and I'm terrible at computers. So that's a, a good validation of um, actually the, the 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 user experience, as they say, working and, and being able to log on and and register and invest a relative well it's 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 a good process and you know we have lots of positive positive um affirmations from our investors and do do check out fx on trust pilot i think we're, we're sort of 4.5 there so you'll see lots of positive things about the user experience and um yes like i say very happy to to help anybody who needs that extra hand so so jake and julian maybe to sort of one Final question from me. Why should investors get on board and support you? Should I jump in at this one to start with and then Jake can? So I suppose what I'd say is you, you, one would look at past performance as a, as a start point if it was me. Um, as Jake said, we've got 500 existing shareholders in our Chelworth and Braden projects. Um, Braden uh, and Chelworth have both had nature solutions um, that have been that have been initiated since we first started working with them. So not only does the investment produce um, wildflower meadows, um, bat nesting boxes, um, great crested new ponds, etc. So good stuff as far as nature is concerned. They the, the shareholders or shareholders also got the return that we said they'd get when we first uh, launched the the projects, and um, importantly. It, the, the energy we produce is is carbon free and so we're doing we're doing good things for wiltshire it's uh it's it, so kind of as i said at the beginning what's not like to like really you're going to get a return on your investment that you've been that we 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 hope we we've given you a flavor of you're going to be helping nature and you're also going to be helping the climate and so um from our perspective there's another thing with silverwood which is kind of unique compared to our other projects and that is you're also helping these kids that are you know that have have issues and you know energy and getting them to understand nature is perhaps more of a challenge than it might be at your normal school at normal is the wrong word but at, 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 a, at a school that is that is that is kind of in the in the run of things that a school would be in Wiltshire Silverwood is special in a good way um, and it's run by people that genuinely care about other people and the more we can give them some assistance through this finance the the better it is for everybody I think. Brilliant. That's excellent. Thanks so much for that, Julian. And I'm really hearing your passion come through here too. Uh, Jake, Jake did, did any any final comments, thoughts from you on, on why? Uh, all of that. I mean, Julian summarised it very well. Just to highlight that we, uh, you know, it's going quite well. Built we, Wildlife put in 121,000 before it even launched, and that that isn't included in the 500k target. That's additional. And then we've raised one forty of the 500k targets and which while our community NG is prepared to put in a, another hundred if, if we only get to 400. So let's just hope we make, make the 500. Yeah, brilliant. No, I'm sure we will. It's looking good. There's a lot of support coming through already from um, existing members and, and new um, FX investors too. So um, I think, I think that's a, that's a definitely a green light, but of course, really important for everybody to get on board and, and support. So um, thank you to Julian and Jake for your, for your passion, your expertise and, and talking us through the project, all it's going to do for the community and the, the school and, and of course for investors and understanding the business model a bit more. Um, the offer is open till the end of November and we'll be sending updates. So uh, please do make sure you're signed up to get emails and uh, you can see how the offer is progressing on our website at fx.org.uk. There was a question from Peter, actually. Peter, sorry, I didn't get to take your question. Please do send it in to help at fx.org.uk and we'll get back to you pronto. Um, thank you very much to the audience for your time and just remains for, for Julian and Jake to say thanks and goodbye. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, thanks for, for tuning in. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Goodbye. Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye.